You are a zombie. Not the kind you would see chasing the cast of your favorite Sunday TV show, or the kind that crawls out of graves on Halloween, but the kind who scrolls for hours every day, mindlessly searching for satisfaction that they can't find. If I asked you what you did on the phone all day, what would you say? Would you even be able to give me an answer? If you did, you'd probably say something like, oh, I was on Facebook, or I was looking at Instagram. What does that even mean? What did you even do? I'm sure that you've been through this. Many people have. You don't have anything to do, so you just sit there scrolling. You keep scrolling and scrolling. Social media used to make you feel something, feel anything. But now you just sit there, mind empty, feeling empty, moving your thumbs, waiting for the next piece of content that's even the least bit interesting, that makes you feel anything at all. But the intervals between good content keep getting longer and longer. You just keep scrolling until so much time has been wasted, time better spent elsewhere, or even better spent using social media the right way. Stop it. Stop scrolling. You might even be scrolling right now while you listen to me speak. It's one of your bad habits. What if I told you social media didn't need to be this way? That social media can be a powerful tool instead of a complete waste of your time. I'm here today to give you the tools to help turn one of your worst pastimes into something constructive. I'm here to talk about using social media mindfully. The first and most important thing you should be doing on social media is subscribing to content that makes you feel something. You probably already did this some point. When you first started your social media journey, you went and followed a bunch of pages that posted the content that you enjoyed. All of those pages slowly got buried by what your friends posted, the pages you followed because they posted one thing you liked, or the pages you followed because your friend tagged you in something and you were curious to see what else the page would post. Your feed is most likely cluttered from this, and all the random other pages are people you followed along the way. When was the last time you went through and purged all the pages that you don't enjoy anymore? You're probably thinking, oh, I've done that before, so I'm fine. You can't get away with doing it every once in a blue moon. You need to make sure that the pages you follow are consistently giving you good content, or you'll end up just scrolling and scrolling, trying to find nuggets of good content and wasting your precious time. If you need to pause the video right now and go to your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, Snapchat, and go delete a bunch of your followings, go ahead, do that, do it right now. I'll still be here if you keep the tab open. Welcome back. The next thing you want to do is go and search out content that makes you feel emotions. Content that makes you think, content that makes you happy, or content that makes you laugh are my personal favorites to follow. You can go on a journey and find out what you like on your own. Go on Facebook, for example, and look up videos of animals being rescued. Those never fail to put a smile on my face. Seeing the before and after of a kitten getting well taken care of is so heartwarming. Look at the content that makes you feel your favorite emotions. If you like to laugh, then follow funny people or funny pages. Those may even help you develop your own sense of humor. When I send funny stuff to my friends, they think I'm hilarious. They're not wrong, but that's a story for another day. If you like thought-provoking content, then look up pages or people who share interesting points of view or fascinating facts. Using social media to look at this kind of content is so much more worthwhile and engaging than finding out what your friend's uncle's dog ate for breakfast. Hint, it was probably dog food. My next important tip is to control the amount of time you spend online in one sitting. This can be three minutes or half an hour, so long as you feel like the amount of time you're spending is healthy for you and doesn't make you feel worn out or numb. I know if I was on social media too long, that I'd start to zone out and scroll without a purpose. I wouldn't even absorb the content I was looking at strictly because I was online for too long. There are timers you can put on your phone to tell you how long you've been spending online. It's too hard to keep track on your own because people tend to get lost in social media. Using a timer app can be an incredibly useful tool to keep you on social media for only as long as you need it. Most phones come with a built-in timer. Just look at the apps you have, and the clock should have a timer built in. 
set the timer for your time limit, and start it when you start using your favorite apps. Beep, beep, beep. The timer says you've been on social media too long. Time to get off and do something else for a little while. You can even break the time allotment into how long you want to spend in each app. Say you want to spend 10 minutes on Facebook or 5 minutes on Instagram. You could have different timers for different apps if you really wanted to go that far. Using social media for only a certain amount of time will ensure you don't get bored of using it. It'll even leave you with a sense of wanting more, which can be exciting. Wouldn't you rather be excited to use social media than feel bored and obligated to use it out of addiction or habit? My last tip is to be aware of social media traps. Apps like Facebook monitor everything you do on their platform. They want, you to measure, they want to measure the different factors that keep you on social media for as long as possible. What type of video can they show you that'll make you watch for five whole minutes? Who are you close enough to that the app can pepper in different things that they engage with to keep you curiously scrolling and collecting their crumbs? What pitfalls can they put in your scroll that'll make you think, just one more picture? Social media is collecting your time and selling it to their advertisers. That's why they're trying to keep you on their app so long. The longer you spend on social media, the more ads they can show you. They want you to scroll mindlessly so you're on the app longer. Don't become a pawn in their game. Use social media a healthy way and avoid the pitfalls they're trying to trap you with. One such trap is their video page. When you look at Facebook video or IGTV, you're at their mercy. There's a difference between following a page that posts videos and going to the sections of these apps that feature random videos. The algorithms on these apps add values to each video that gets uploaded to their platform. And they compare the values on random videos to the content that you already follow and try to show you things that are most like the videos that you watch the most often and for the longest time. They will then measure how long you watch, whether you engage with likes or comments, and whether you're actively watching in your browser or if you have another tab open. I'm sure there are more factors than this that they measure. These are, these are just the ones that I came across. They take all of these what are called key performance indicators and attribute scores for the metadata of each kind of video that you watch. Then, in no time at all, they put together playlist after playlist of videos that they spoon feed you, measuring everything you do and making sure you stay there as long as possible. They put the video ads in the middle of these videos and they make money off of you watching them. This is why they do this to you. The best thing you can do to avoid this trap is to stay away from the video section entirely and only watch videos from pages or people that you follow. If they start playing an ad in the middle of one of these videos, feel free to scroll away from it so that they don't keep showing you videos with ads in your normal feed. Another social media trap is the notification feature. If you're spending too long away from an app, then they'll bombard your phone with notifications about literally anything. You can see this for yourself. If you spend an hour or two away from Facebook, you'll get notifications about the silliest things. Oh, your friend Melissa posted a photo, or, oh, you missed a post from the group you're in. There will be random notifications all over your phone. These apps get jealous that you're not there. They show you notifications because a little alarm will go off in your head when you see it. You may think, I can't believe I almost missed a post from Melissa. The app knows you well enough to know which notifications will get you back on the app. They'll then use other tricks to keep you there. What you can do to avoid this trap is to turn off the notifications feature for your social media apps. Since each phone is different, you can look up how to do this for your specific device on your own. You'll feel so much better when you don't have the pressure from all those notifications popping up on your phone. The last trap I'll talk about is the advertising algorithm. Facebook keeps track of ads the same way they keep track of videos on the platform that are longer than one minute. They give them values and measure the way that you score with each variable. The most important variables being engagement and view time. Apps will show you ads that'll keep you on the platform longer, or ones that you're most likely to make a purchase from based on various other factors that they measure outside the app. 
Instagram and Facebook even released a shopping feature so that you can make a purchase and stay on the app at the same time. To avoid the ads, just keep scrolling past them. Don't give them any watch time. Don't engage with them. Ignore the ads. Once you start ignoring the ads on social media, you'll no longer feel like a product. This can be very freeing. Social media doesn't need to feel bad. Social media is not inherently bad for you. You can use social media every single day and still be better for it. You can go on your phone, your tablet, your computer, and enjoy yourself knowing that you can use social media correctly and for your own benefit. Let these apps work for you instead of working for these apps. Another important thing to consider is that you should be mindful of the content that you put out on social media as well as the content that you take in. When you post something online, everyone and their grandma can see it. Even people you've never met before can come across the words that you say or the pictures that you show. When you say something, are you okay with what others may think of it? Your future employers, new friends you meet online, or even someone important that you haven't even met yet. They can all look back and see everything that you post. Keep in mind when you're about to hit the post button. Posts that may come across as mean, negative, or offensive can be seen forever on your account. Even if you feel aggressive in the moment, do you want that aggression to live on in the words that others can see in their screens? You may feel mad at someone, and you want them to know that, so you call them out. You'll probably move on from it in no time at all, and your feelings will go away. But that post won't go away unless you go back and delete it, but deleting it definitely won't make people forget about what you said. Social media can be a driving force in your interpersonal relationships. It can be even be other people's first impression of you. Make sure you don't make a bad first impression or leave a bad taste in anyone's mouth because this may come back to bite you. Make sure that the things you say positively reflect who you are as a person, not just some spur of the moment feelings you may have. You're a good person, but people can become distracted by the things you say on the internet. When you put good things out into the internet, it can show everyone how positive you are. It may even make their day. Wouldn't you rather make people smile instead? I know I would. Also make sure that the things that you share are true. Some articles online may present false information. It's easy to be tricked when you read something online. We're all inherently trusting people, and we don't expect others to try to trick us. If you're posting and you're going to share an article with your friends or family, do a quick search on Google to make sure that it's true. Then feel free to share away if it is. The last thing I'll leave you with is a piece of advice. Make sure that when you're online, that you surround yourself with good people. These are the people that make you feel happy. They make you feel good about yourself. And they may help you become the best version of yourself that you can be. Online friendships can last a lifetime. If you properly investigate someone's background and determine that they're a safe and worthwhile friend, then you could keep them as a social media friend for years to come. Friendship is one of the most powerful tools on social media. Make sure you use it to your advantage. Thank you.